In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how you can use depth map shadows in Maya. I'll show you some of the settings and functionality of depth map shadows so you can control the quality of the shadows you get when you use this technique. When you create a light in Maya, you've got two choices for the kinds of shadows that you can create. So I've got a spotlight here, and if I select it, and I'll open up the attribute editor and select the shape node for that light, and I'll scroll down here to the shadows section. And in the shadow section, you can see I have two choices. I can select here and choose depth map shadows, or I can scroll down here and turn on ray trace shadows. And the difference between these two types of shadows is that ray trace shadows can give you more realistic results, but at a cost of longer rendering times because it has to calculate the way the rays move throughout the scene. With depth map shadows, even though you may have ray tracing turned on, it still only uses a ray casting technique to figure out the depth quality of each one of the shadows. In this rendered image, you can see that depth map shadows do not work with transparent objects. It treats it as if it's a solid piece of geometry. But one of the benefits of depth map shadows is that once you calculate the shadow map, you can reuse it without having to recalculate it for every frame in your animation. I've got a scene here where I've stacked a series of geometry planes in Z-space leading right up to the light source. And this particular light is using depth map shadows. So I'll render a frame so we can see what that looks like. And here you can see the cone of light being generated by that spotlight, and each one of these planes is casting a shadow onto the surface below it. Depth map shadows get their name from the fact that the light is generating a texture map that is based on the Z depth of the distance from the light to the objects that's casting the shadow. And I can show you an example of that. If I double click the light and I go into the depth map shadows attributes section, I'll scroll down to the section where it says disk based depth maps. By default, that's turned off. But if I set it to overwrite existing depth maps, it will create a shadow map file. So now when I render this scene, not only has it created this RGB file in my images directory, but it has also created a file inside of the render data folder. If I open that up, you can see it's rendered out these texture files in the IFF format. If we take a look at one of these files, what you're seeing is the point of view from that specific spotlight. So I'll flip back to Maya and show you what that looks like. If I take this spotlight, and I'm going to middle mouse click on that and drop it into the perspective view. This is the top down view from that spotlight. And here's the cone angle adjustments. So this is what you see when you look through the point of view of that spotlight. When that spotlight calculates the depth, the objects that are closest show up here as dark, and the objects that are further away are showing up as light. And this is how it calculates which object is closest and should cast shadows onto the objects below it. So each piece of geometry is shaded in the depth map based on how far away it is from that spotlight. So now that we know how depth map shadows work, we can start to use that to control the quality of our depth map shadows. I'll switch back to Maya here, and I've got a simple scene with a ground plane, a sphere, and a light that's casting depth map shadows. And I've set the cone angle fairly wide on this spotlight, so I can show you some of the artifacts that come with depth map shadows, so that when I render this frame, you'll notice that the shading on the sphere is very smooth, but if I look at the edge of the shadow, you can see it's very jagged. So that stair-stepped edge is actually in the texture map itself, and there's a couple of ways we can control that in Maya. I'm gonna store this image in the render buffer so we can compare it later, and I'll show you the settings that are contributing to that jagged edge. You'll notice here in the attribute that the resolution of the depth map is set to 512 pixels. And because I've turned on disk-based depth maps, it's writing out that information to an image file that I can open up and show you what that looks like. This is the depth texture map file, and the resolution of this file is 512 pixels square. This is the point of view of the spotlight that created this depth map. And in this image, you can see the jagged edges of the shadow map generated by the sphere. So if I want to increase the quality of the edges of this shadow map, one of the things I can do is increase the resolution of the texture map. So I'll flip back to Maya here and scroll up to the resolution setting and change that from 512 to 1024. Now when I render that image, you can see that the 
edge of the shadow is much better than it was in the low resolution version. And if I slide back and forth to compare, you can see there's the jagged edge of the 512 resolution map, and it's much smoother here in the 1024 version. So if I compare these two depth texture maps side by side, you can see that the 1024 map is twice the size of the 512 map. And that increase in resolution is what is helping to smooth the edges of that shadow map. The downside of this technique is that it's going to take Maya longer to calculate a higher resolution texture map file. So that's not always the best choice to increase the quality of your shadow maps. I'd like to show you another technique where we can get a high quality shadow map using a smaller resolution texture file. So back here in Maya, I'm going to take a snapshot and save this into my render buffer for comparison later. And I'll open up the spotlight in the attribute editor and reset the resolution to 512, which is the default. And what I can do instead is turn off this autofocus feature and manually set the focus myself. And the way the focus works is I can scroll up here to my cone angle and I see that that's set to 92 degrees. And what I'm going to do is look through this spotlight and adjust the cone angle so that the cone is just large enough to cover the sphere itself. So I can look at that value and then retype it as 30 degrees and then I'll make a mental note of that value of 30 degrees and retype it to 92 degrees which was the original setting that we started with. And now I can scroll back down to my focus parameter and enter that value of 30 degrees which is just large enough to cover the sphere. And what we're telling Maya is to only use this 30 degree angle to calculate the shadow map for this spotlight. And even though the light itself has a cone angle of 92 degrees, the 30 degree focus angle will be used to calculate the shadow map. So I'll switch back to the perspective view and re-render this frame. And I'll save that into the render buffer and here you can see the quality of that shadow edge is much better now even compared to the higher resolution texture map. So here you can see the 512 resolution map. Here next to it is the 1024 resolution map. And here is the manual focus texture map with the 512 resolution, where we're getting a much better quality shadow edge. I'll show you what that manual focus texture map looks like. On the right side, you can see the original texture map where the sphere was only occupying a portion of the resolution. And on the left, where we use the manual focus, you can see the sphere is occupying more of the resolution. And that's how we get a higher quality shadow map. The other benefit of using depth map shadows is that you have the ability to reuse the depth texture map once you've generated it. So here in my settings, if I say reuse existing maps, instead of calculating the shadow maps for that light, it's going to read in this texture file and use that. You can imagine that if you have multiple frames in an animated sequence, that you can use this technique to read in a single texture map instead of having to recalculate the shadow map for every frame of that sequence. So as long as the light itself is not animated and the geometry is not moving through the light, you can save a ton of time by reusing those existing depth map shadows. So those are just some of the settings you can use when you apply depth map shadows to your scene that will help you keep your render times low and allow you to control the quality you get with depth map shadows.